Dos has got his head in the physio bed, you know, in the, the <laughs> hole in the bed. And he just comes up, uppercuts him through the hole and thing, and then they just start going off. There's like medical equipment flying everywhere, people trying to jump masseuse ladies, like stuck in the middle of it as well. <laughs> you know. Hello and welcome back to the Rugby Pass Offloads with uh, Ryan Wilson, Max Leaf, usually when he's on time, and delighted to be joined as well uh, by England legend Mike Brown. And uh, later on the show, we'll also have uh, England star attraction in Ollie Lawrence as well. First things first, how are we? How's it going, Mike? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. So I'm sort of the opener for the big the big time coming on later with Ollie Lawrence, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Um, can you can you actually believe Max is late again? He's but at least he's going to turn up this episode. That's nice. Let's start with you, right? Glasgow's ten match unbeaten run coming to an end in Joburg. I mean, you were up against a team who'd lost what five on the bounce, down to fourteen men for most of the match. Yeah, but not making excuses it was over in Joburg and they're a lot better at home than they are anywhere else these boys so the the, the oh, I think the boys flew in like a Wednesday maybe at altitude 30 degrees coming in from Glasgow where actually it's back down to minus two at the moment bit of a shock to the system but we're all right I mean 10 in a row was pretty good going so you can't you can't keep going forever oh here he is here he uh, bloody yeah. is all right lads no this is an absolute disgrace Sometimes the schedule gets in the way of these things. We went over today, lads. I'm sorry. I, I apologise, but I'm, I'm out of control. I'm just a foot soldier. Mine's not to question why. Mine is but to do and die. You know this. Brownie, how are you? You well, sir? Good, thanks. I heard Pat keeps you in for quite a long time. Oh, absolutely. He makes us earn every single GBP, old boy. <laughs> I've heard the stories. I have heard. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt you've heard. Yes. That's but why yeah. people. That's why people love this show because it's raw and Max. Just raw, and, 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 we, you know, we're and, still playing. We're still training. It must have been an easier, slightly easier session after seeing off the local rivals, Bath. What third win oh, yeah. in all competitions? Oh uh, uh, yeah, Daddy was back at the wreck. No, no, it was it was tough, man. It was tough going. Benno was scrutinising me in every which way, scrum time, and he was testing out the suspension and loose. It was you know when you're playing against your mates, they just add a little bit more extra. Marmite on it, and yeah, it was it was tasty. But yeah, good game. Good to get that. Good to get that sort of um, decision at the end that we've been we've been done on those last few weeks. So it was nice to win that way. Um, thankfully, so yeah, we keep rolling, boys. We keep rolling. So you won, you won, and then Pat Lamb kept you in for even longer. Oh, you know, like sometimes you go the opposite way. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. no, I can't, I can't. That's how coaches go. I get it though. Like, don't don't lax up. We've got to make sure they stay on their tippy toes at all times. No complacency. Yeah, no complacency, exactly. Oh. So Max, Max with a win, but let's first hand out our real congratulations to, to Mike on that move to Leicester and two wins out of two. There was that man of the match performance on debut. Um, how have the last couple of weeks been for you? Yeah, it's been good. Um, kind of came out of the blue, so... Um, didn't really expect the opportunity um and a team like a club like Leicester with all that history and tradition you know I've grown up from a young age watching them um over the years so now to be part of that you know for a couple of games um a couple of months initially and then we'll see see what happens after that but just trying to be in there with no expectations just enjoy it which I am um it's a great environment good bunch of lads just proper grafters you know we really just get stuck in and get their heads down and um, yeah, they love it. So I'm enjoying it. It's good. I, I can't imagine there was uh, many Mike Brown Leicester fans before you were going up there. So you converted <laughs> a few of them. Were you getting it tight? Or because I can imagine you playing for Quincy Gates and they would have fucking hated you. It's the same with everyone, though, right? It's yeah. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a worry when it kind of got announced. There was a few, few things, but nothing too bad. But hopefully I've won them over after that first game. So yeah, it was it was a good first game to be part of, you know, Sarri's at Welford Road. Great atmosphere, great environment um to play in. So yes, enjoyed it. And um it's always good beating Sarri's, isn't it? So oh, oh Visa could have put you away after four minutes, mate. We were talking about it last oh, week. We're like, just give it, you wanker. And he's held on to it. Yeah. But it's yeah. one of them. I can't really say anything because I've been there like five minutes. Can't really like <laughs> spray like I've done at other clubs. Kind of yeah. like, you know, stay in my lane and be like, oh yeah, next time, mate. Next time be fun. Um, but yeah, luckily you nipped over 
And I got the pass off Ashy as well, which is quite surprising because he's chasing that record, isn't he? So I was quite shocked to get a pass off him and just nipped in. Yeah, it was nice. Talk us through how tough, though, the last six months have been since you've left Newcastle. Yeah, it's, it's been tough in some ways. It's been ups and downs. Like, I've really enjoyed going through the transition stuff of, um, you know, kind of what I'm working towards with that and the learning, kind of being more open-minded to opportunities and things like that. Because um, when you're a rugby player, you're quite narrow focused and just focused on doing, getting your rugby done and all that sort of thing. So it's been good to be out there, kind of broadening horizons with a few things and taking up opportunities I wouldn't necessarily have done previously then obviously you have the down moments where because I still feel like I, I could play and wanted to play you know just watching and seeing other people getting opportunities to play you're just like oh, I just want to be out there and um, you know watching the Prem games being played um, and not being part of that for the first time in a long time um, and then there's obviously the the financial of uh, things of not having a job um, the uncertainty of, of what that holds in the future and you know, uncertainty of looking after a young family and things like that, which obviously gives you down moments. Um, but, you know, I just try to keep my head down and do that transition stuff and also just stay fit and, and be ready if an opportunity did come along. And uh, luckily, my old mate, Wiggy, chucked me that lifeline, at least for a couple of months anyway. In the game against uh, Saracens, with a lot of experience, how good has it been linking up with the likes of... Yeah, Andre Pollard and, and guys you know well in the shape of you know Chris Ashton, Ben Young, so there was Jimmy Gopeth as well. Uh, how good's it been linking up with them on the daily? Yeah, good. Fuck, we were old bat line that, and um, we had a good good laugh about it in the week leading up to it. But um, no, look, all that experience is, is great for me. I still feel like I learn when you're around people like that. Um, you know, Holly's obviously been there and, and won it. Um, at the highest level with South Africa and Jimmy's just been around the block um, I used to say to him after every game um, through the season like he's my hero because he's just been playing for so long I'd be like mate I just want to carry on just because you, you're still going it's unbelievable he's like 40 years old and he's still and nick of him as well like he's shredded he doesn't miss a session ever like he's always out there and, and grinding and yeah the nick of him as well like yes yeah, he's uh, he's doing well Boys, let's go to the action from the weekend starting in Paris. Ryan and Max both predicted Scottish wins. They unfortunately ended up losing 33-21. The game was 100 minutes long. Um, yeah, happy days. Scotland win. But um, I think maybe they're a little bit too ambitious. They had a lot of, of opportunities and Finn was kicking so well. I think they should have taken some more points off the tee. But man, it was such a great game. So exciting. What, Which is a shame. What, what, what about... When the ref tried to overrule the French red card, did you see that? So Gilko gets his red card, seven minutes, whatever it is, off he goes. Yeah, and then poor old Hamish Watson, first time back in the team, like all excited. Then he gets papped and they they make the change. But then when the the tight head for France gets that red card, the ref is trying to bring it down. He's going, uh, no, no, right? There's a low degree of danger here when. <laughs> effectively just headbats him and you're like hold on a minute and thankfully the TMO came in and said whoa, whoa no there's the degree of danger this is head on head that's a red card you were almost like the ref was wanting to I would, if I'm a ref there I'm going Fuck, right good chance to balance this up here let's make it fair but exactly like, I would what? jump into that yeah I'd have done what I'd have done I'd done the opposite I'd have jumped into it be like and make it 14 all let's do it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's just trying to make the thank game you. Fair, thank you thank you for that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there was literally no mitigation in uh, circumstances there, was it? At all. No, zero. He's just gone flying headbutt. Yeah. yeah. Complete meltdown. Mm. Smoke someone here. You look at that game like we we had so many opportunities to actually take it that little bit further and just miss those. Like there was a few line outs that went astray, a couple opportunities like five metres out, missed them and that that was that was a good chance to beat the French over there and, and carry on this unbelievable run we've had. And uh it doesn't get easier next week, does it, against the Irish? Holy hecka. Right. Were you proud of that performance or is it just frustration all around? I expected Scotland to go over there and win. So it's I, I'm almost a little bit frustrated because you're like, we should have we had the opportunities to take it. We had the opportunities to win. It was a good game though. It was still a good game and like all the drama right at the beginning it made it pretty exciting. So um, Mate. The French in the first 20, though, I thought Scotland were just opting out of tackling. 
They were the, the yards up to carry. They were just tickling them. They, it was too easy that those first two scores I fought from France, but maybe it's just Paris at home. It, they were just intense, but then Scotland sort of clued on. But I found I thought the um, the attack wasn't exactly that complicated. The boys are just running geezers over. France's attack never really that complicated, is it? They just want to, yeah, they just yeah. Those big, yeah, up the guts, big units. Horrible. Yeah. Once they get a rumble on, that's that's it's over. Do you reckon? Do you reckon Sean Edwards told Geelong to just run around main Doohan? Like he was man marketed whilst he was on money. He he smoked him so many times. I was like, definitely Sean needs to put a bounty on him. But, uh, <laughs> I, hey, I, wouldn't, like, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised because we've spoke about it before on here. Like if he doesn't get into the game, you could tell he gets frustrated and you could yeah. see the frustration. And I wouldn't be surprised if they had done that. Man mark him, just take him out of the game. Like they do with tens effectively. But like, once he gets going, <laughs> he's a dangerous man, isn't he? So... But you they, might be right. You might be right. Yeah. They diffused the Biltong munching juggernaut for for damn sure with Geelong until he went off. Poor guy. But, um, but he, he was busy when he was on. Hell of a game. Hugh Jones <laughs> stood well. I thought Shuggy was outstanding. Oh. Hugh Jones, the whole, the whole game was classy. Was a yeah. standout for me. He's um, he's on another level at the moment. Um, but yeah, a bit frustrated. We should have taken more opportunities and. And made that a bit closer, and then the try at the end just sort of put made it look like they they completely dominated. Um, but hey ho, life goes on. Uh, let's shame Mystic Mike a little bit now. You predicted Scotland would finish fifth in the championship, uh, saying they could be amazing one week. To be fair, and then just totally shocking the next. Any regrets around that prediction? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, no, to be fair, they have. Um... Yeah, they've been a lot better than I thought they would be. Um, and they could have, like you said, they could have turned France over over there. So credit to them where it's due. You're right, Mike. Is that hard to say? <laughs> Look at him. I can see the like minute, resentment but... in his face. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's not Wales, actually. At least it's not Wales. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'd be that'd be the worst. Grinding the teeth as he says <laughs> it, you <little> fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Mike, over the, over the years, what was your your real bugbear team that you really enjoyed beating? Wales, easy. Wales, hundred percent. I think it's a bit out of respect because they were a class team. Then they they obviously just they always used to do well in Six Nations. Um, all their supporters seemed to hate me. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, and yeah, just it was just always a good rivalry intensity. It always seemed a, very, a bit different during the week in the build up. You know more chat in, in the press and around the players and more of a buzz. I don't know why. Um, I loved playing at, uh, at the Principality. For me, it's the best away stadium that I've played in, especially when the roof was shut. Even though we lost that game, like the the the, the atmosphere was unbelievable. Like nothing I ever experienced uh, after that. Um, so yeah, all those things chucked into into the into the mix and the history and the rivalry. They were always uh, outwardly saying they hated us. I suppose that's like most teams, but they especially talked about it. And um, for me, you know, I hated them when when it came to to game day. So, um, yeah, we we uh, we loved those games. Well, perfect time to move into the Wales versus England clash. Uh, the Welsh <laughs> suffering their ninth loss in ten games, uh, going down twenty ten to England. Uh, Mike, what did you make of that match? They they've kind of turned into the Scotland team that we used to play against. You know, not not that great at the moment, are they? So such, um, such an easy win that. Fucking hell. So so what are England then at the moment? Are they like the the ultimate worst? Like the two worst teams in the tournament going at it, and um, Wales, England. Yeah, it, it was wasn't like the, um, the wooden spoon. It was good to watch. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the great greatest game to watch, was it? It was boring, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. Yeah, look, for, for Wales, they're in a they're in a real um, dark place at the moment, on and off the field, and you could see that. You know, they they've got some work to do um, with England. Again, Steve coming in, they're starting kind of from ground zero and try, trying to build. So I could see why they played that sort of game plan. At least they were kicking with purpose, you know, as soon as they, you know, as minimal rucks as possible, as soon as they can't get any momentum, they were going to kick it. 
and that's what they did. And and to be fair, like it worked for them, didn't it? And they were good in the air. They won that aerial battle. Battle. They won the breakdown battle. And then off the back of that, you did see glimpses of what they're trying to work on the in the attack. I think um, a lot better at taking opportunities. There are still a few they they left out there, but you can kind of see what they're doing. And I think that's why they're doing that because it's basic, and then they hopefully try and build off that. Um, but we knew when Steve came in, that's what he was going to bring. You know, that's what the, you know he played in the Sarri team that played that way. Um, <clears throat> and then you know he was coach with England when we played that way when Eddie first took over and then obviously what he did with Leicester and playing a similar way so that was what he always what he was going to bring and then hopefully he kind of he'll kind of um adapt and build off that but they've got to start somewhere haven't they and at least they are kicking with purpose whereas at the end of Eddie's time they were just kind of kicking it for the sake of it um but yeah Wales not in a great place are they well, is that the worst Wales side that you've seen in your time in the game yeah, it's got to be. There was, it's just for me, there was. It just seemed like they were slow and ponderous. It was the commentating that was cracking me up, man. With Jiffy <laughs> Davis when he was, <laughs> whenever they kicked it to Stewart, he just lost his mind. Oh. The thing. <laughs> like it was just like the, the, there was one moment where their nine, who actually I thought was quite good, I can't remember his name now, did a quick tap, and he's off and gone. And actually made good meters and caught caught England, and then half. I think the whole team were like twenty meters away, and you're thinking. And that's why they're getting beaten at breakdown. There's people walking. There's people like Alan Wynn, who's supposed to be the talismanic leader, just walking around. Don't think they were that physical. And that's, again, why they're getting turned over the breakdown. Um, yeah, and then, and then the no no adaption of their, their game plan. And you're thinking at some point they're going to change it to maybe, you know, shift to kick it or do something different because it was like, it was just every single kick was on him and he was never going to drop it. Because also there was no, never really any pressure as well. So it's like, what are they doing? It was just, it was, yeah, it was, it was strange. Um, yeah, such a shame to see from the Welsh team, isn't it? Have you come across, have you come across Big Freddie Stewart yet at, at training or has he just been away no. the whole time you've been there? Yeah, no, for the first couple of weeks when I had the trial week and then just before he left, yeah, he was there. Very impressive young man, the way he speaks, already a leader, such a young age. I was, he's obviously... Uh, has that physical presence being six foot five as well. Um, so, yeah, I think there's loads more to come from his, his game as well. You know, he's obviously got the thing I like about him is he's got those fundamentals and basics of a fullback nailed on world class um, already. And that's what I look for first and foremost in fullback. And then you can build off that. And I think there's more to come from him and the way England can use him in attack, um, his, his physical presence. You know, he's also got good hands. Um, and then he'll just continue getting better with the with the fifteen ability as well. So, yeah, very impressive young man. We last week had Matt Gitter on the pod, reliving his nightmare kicking day at Murrayfield in two thousand and nine. Uh, what did we make of um, Owen Farrell's performance? I mean, he missed four off the tee, but some of them, you know, it was it was as though Max was lining up for them. Like they they, they seem to go no, far. no disrespect, mate. That's Sorry, too much. that's too far. I mean, uh, hey, I'm not being funny. Like, I've got no idea about place keep, but exactly. Put the ball on the the tee a little bit at a weird angle, and I'm looking at mate. That's not going towards the posts. <laughs> Look, he's a world class um, goal kicker, isn't he? So who are we, any of us, to to um, kind of <laughs> comment on what percent for the tournament we're getting here? Are we any chance to give him a dig because you've got previous. <laughs> Um, like, hold on a minute you've just torn the Welsh literally everyone in Wales the new one <laughs> I'm just saying he's I think he put the ball on the kick tee wrong I, yeah I can't talk about yeah I, I really can't talk about place kicking I'll, I'll, yeah <laughs> those place kickers they, they have off days don't they oh, it's not it's, yeah, exactly. become a regular thing which it won't do with him like he'll be he'll be kicking all hours of the day for the next two weeks um, sorting it out I'll, I'll just let Freddie Stewart do it you can probably do that as well. Probably, yeah, you can probably do that. Yeah. Fucking yeah. put that limb through that. Fucking oh. be knocking him over from seventy. Can you imagine? There was a viral article on Rugby Pass doing the round saying it's time to move on from Owen Farrell and give Marcus Smith the ten shirt and allow Ollie Lawrence to be his uh, Andre Estherson, if you will, with this kind of old school pack heavy kicking game. Not necessarily going to win them a World Cup. Mike, what are your thoughts? You know those boys pretty well <laughs> to be fair to Owen like he has played he has you know started his season with Saris unbelievably well like 
Kimi dipped off last season. Um, I definitely was one of one of his uh, critics. Um, but no, I think he's been brilliant for Saris uh, at the start of this year. Whereas Marcus he had a few injuries and probably hasn't hit the ground running as much as he'd like to. So if you're going off form, probably Owen, if you're going off the way they want to play, clearly it's it's Owen and he's captain. So, and I don't think they they, they definitely weren't working well together. Like I've said that from the, from the afternoon, you know, the personalities they have and the way they like to play, it just doesn't, it just clashes. So it wasn't working. So I'm glad Steve has made that big decision to, um, you know, just put one of them at 10 and then the other one on the bench. And yeah, and unfortunately for Marcus at the moment, it's Owen. Um, but things can change, you know, if they change the way they play, maybe, or I can't see it happening at the moment. They're not, yeah, they're not going to change the captains any time soon, are they? Especially not before this World Cup. So that's going to be the, th- the thing. It's going to be Van Portley and... Uh... Because he brings us some a little bit of speed there, but Farrell at ten, I think. I don't think you'll see Marcus Smith. He's just your impact player at the moment, which is unfortunate for him. But after the World Cup, yeah. that's when you'll start to see him coming more. The thing right. is as well, if you look at the makeup of that back line, if you had um, Jack Van Porfley, Marcus, and um, Ollie, it's quite a quite a young, experienced nine, ten, twelve as well. So that probably plays on the coach's mind as well, um, especially with such short time where they've got to get some wins and confidence. Boys, you're saying that, you know, it's good to have the Richards on the bench, you know, to have those impact players coming on. But Marcus Smith, Henry Arrow, they'll reduce to, what, 28 seconds off the bench. Um, well, I'd probably contest this, but there's not a huge amount you can do in 28 seconds. But um, how, how pissed off will 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 Marcus Smith be? <laughs> Knowing um, knowing Marcus the way I do, he's ultra competitive. That's what makes him so good. Um, so he'd be seeding. <laughs> you know, he wants to he wants to be the main man. He wants to be out there. He wants to be representing England. That's what what he works so hard. He's a ultra competitor as well. So he wants to be in the battle in in the in the competition. So yeah, he would have been desperate to get on as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, it's just I yeah, I didn't get that. Like I. I going on for that short amount of time is I don't know what's the point what's the point someone yeah elaborate that like, the only thing I th- can think is they would they could have got a bonus point still couldn't they they wanted to get a, potentially get a bonus point and they had a scrum didn't they maybe they thought yeah. those people could just have a strike them. off the set piece yeah yeah, something out the backside and go the length and get that bonus point when the game was already kind of wrapped up a lot of Arundel starting I think he's incredible I'd give him a crack at some point He's who dropping? Uh, instead, yeah, instead of who? Who you dropping? Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe and also, <laughs> also, he's literally only just got back. He what, he's had twenty minutes in a prem prem cup yeah. game, or yeah, or premiership game. He hasn't had a lot. He's only just come back from injury as well. I can love his life. I think he's yeah, so good. He's, he's boy wonder, but Anthony's playing well. Maynard's is scoring tries for fun, and Freddie Stewart ain't going anywhere t- anytime soon. Switching him for Maynard, then that's if, 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 oh. Sorry. Mike, you spent a lot of time uh, playing with Nick Evans. Um, is he the right coach for, for Owen Farrell's more sort of conservative approach versus Marcus Smith? I think Richard Wigglesworth is the right coach because he's also my boss at the moment. So, <laughs> um, No, Nick Evans. Um, yeah, well, I, th- I can see little bits of what they're, they're trying, what, you know, what he's good at and what he's, you know, installed at Quinn's in what they're doing in their attack at the moment, you know, up in that ruck speed when they have, um, you know, won the ball back in unstructured situations. Um, when the ball's been in the air, they have, you know, looked better playing on top and taking opportunities um, instead of just setting up nice rugby league style shapes. Um, so we're starting to see that, I think. Um, so I think it's, I think it's been good. I think Steve probably thought, you know, the way Quinn's attack is quite interesting. There's something we can, you know, bring into to the English game as well as what they're doing at the moment with the kicking game and set piece and all that sort of thing. So I think it's quite shrewd from him getting him in and pick his brains and see what Quinns do. It's another team that he hasn't been involved in that he can learn from in hard Quinns um, through the through Nick. So I think that's quite a, a smart um, appointment by by Stephen. He probably knew he was bringing Wiggy in anyway. 
but it couldn't at the moment. So why not bring someone in from Quinn's and yeah, like I said, learn from from what they're doing and see what what things are good, what things you, you want to use in the future, maybe not. Um, get them better at unstructured, which they probably haven't been um, so good at. So yeah, I think it's been it's, um, yeah been intelligent from uh, Steve getting him in. I can I, I can see little bits of it coming through. Brown, are you all thinking of going into coaching, aren't you? No, not coaching. No, coaching's not for me. I'd get too frustrated with players, I think, as well. Dealing with people like Max. On a yeah. daily basis, just <laughs> fucking turning up gym. to a meeting. In the, like... gym all, in, in the gym all day. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, yeah. Mate. sorry, mate. I know where my best buddy, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I've, do you know what? I'd love you yeah, to have that lamb on here for 20 minutes just to grill oh, me. Just to grill me. Yeah, just tell you my ins and outs. Oh my lord, it'd be a laundry list the length of your arm, old boy. Are you still in the? Are you still in the facility now? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Never stop. <laughs> go find him. I'm go chained to him. the place. Should we go find him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Let's move on to Ireland's relatively hard-fought victory over Italy in Rome. You know, normally over the years we'd be pretty fearful of how messy things could get at the hands of the Irish, uh, but Italy in it throughout, trading by just four points going into the last quarter of an hour or so. And Mike, how impressed have you been by Italy this year? Yeah, they're turning, they're turning some machine, aren't they? Um, what impressed me about this weekend was, um, you know, Italy are going well. Um, it's, it's a way, it's a potential banana skin for Ireland. Everyone expecting them just to turn up and win. They were missing key players as well, um, which can always, you know, shake a few things up and, kind of derail a few things um so that impressed me and they just you know turned up and did a proper job um yeah Italy you know put a good performance in as well which is great, also great to see you know you, you want um we you know we've been talking about Italy getting replaced through the years and so it's good now that they're finally you know able to put performances together to really put start pushing the other teams because no one wants to see you know cricket scores and, and things like that and just one team getting pumped every every game. So it's great that they're now able to really push teams and, and score points. And they pushed Ireland. Um, but again, Ireland were just professional, weren't they? Turned up, did their job. Um, yeah, and roll on. The, the thing about the Italians is they stayed like within a score and then on creep away and then they managed to pull it back to within seven. And again, it was one of those ones where the scoreline almost flatters Ireland because... They were in it for most of the game, the Italians. Fuck, again, I, you know, we talk about him every week, but Ange Capuzzo, love the guy. Like, the way he played, he was so good. God, beastly control things. He was he was looking sharp. They just looked like a different team. The Italians are beating the Welsh. Oh, OK. Oh, dear. I'm... Yeah. I'm we're calling it here, Max, and you're in, you're in the boat with me. You know, I'm 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 on the yeah I'm on the I'm on the bandwagon. Let's get let's get the cannoli out. Yeah, we're Italy. on the Roman we're on the Roman carriage together. Yeah. We are Italy yeah, all the way against Wales. Yeah. I reckon I, mean, I reckon it, they're it, doing it. If you're looking at the performances, it's not actually a bigger shout as we kind mm. of make it, is it? Like <sighs> if you're comparing the, the two teams on how what they're producing at the moment, and it's in Rome. I, yeah, yeah, I think they're mm. very much favourites for that. Mike, you're saying, you know, Wales looking so blunt, out of ideas. <laughs> then you've got you've got um you've got Ryan loving how Paolo Garbisi is pulling the strings. But <clears throat> but actually Italy are they're looking a really, really exciting attacking side. From your perspective, is this the type of Italy that we want to see now? Yeah, definitely. I think I think like I said, we don't want to see Italy getting pumped every game and and they're playing good rugby and they're, they're, they're producing it on the scoreboard as well. But they, they now need to take that next step and get even closer or start getting the, more wins because um, they don't want to be like gallant losers every time. Because again, that, then, that, then that comes boring, doesn't it? You know, we want them to be, you know, what they, they, they're, they're getting in within what score or two now, but now getting in, in, you know, within a few points. And then you know winning by a few points and really pushing teams that way. So um, yeah, that would be the next step. But yeah, fair play to them. Um, they're playing good rugby. Their, their, their head coach has obviously done some brilliant things with them. So it's great to see. It's great for 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 the competition. Max, quick word from you on Italy's pack and that back row and how it's setting the platform for their success of late. 
I mean, they're doing all the right stuff up front. I think that's the cornerstones of their game are coming coming into fruition because they've just got guys in crucial positions that allow them to dominate some set piece and control the game. So, and a lot of those characters are in that pack, and I'm a big fan of some of those boys. Yeah, it's it's looking it's looking free. Bellissima, bellissima, bellissima. Yeah. Is it refreshing for everyone to you feel like Italy belong this season? in the Six Nations yeah, rather than all were... the horrible chat that you were throwing yeah. last okay. last year about them being been down yeah, that, you were, that you were that you bit. were that you were doing you were loading the questions though yeah that's all I do that's all are. I do I just yeah, try to, I'm guilty. trying to get clickbait so yeah, yeah you, you were shit staring yeah. yeah you are you're a shit staring you're a little shit staring <laughs> <But anyway. laughs> I still would like to see Georgia though like you know what I mean I, I feel like they're, 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 they're close you know but um <laughs> But yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad Italy are like persevering this season. Absolutely, it will be. That's it. And I think I think we've got to do the relegation. Romania and Georgia possibly coming in, and then you've got England, Wales, and Italy <laughs> fighting out the relegation. <laughs> I just think it was such a great thing to see. I don't know why it was happening. <laughs> But you know what Very I mean? Good. England, Wales, Italy every year <laughs> fighting for, oh, let's stay up. We've got to stay up. And then you've got the Romanians taking over and the Georgians coming up. Yeah. yeah lovely good. thing. Very good, Rye. Yeah. Nice. I wish there was some relegation back in the old Scotland wooden spoon days. but oh, well, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Christ. It's Ryan played in as well. <laughs> <laughs> Current holders of the uh, Five Nations, actually, yeah. boys. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did you always wear? Did you always vass up your legs back in the day at Quinns? Yeah, I still do. Put a bit of. You still up. do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. is that? Because you believe in the it makes you more like you're never going to catch me like the greasy man from um, Family no. Guy. <laughs> Not really. It yeah. Annoyed people, which was great. I I, I enjoyed doing oh, that. It's, ops, like, yeah. it's just like the cuts and that you get on your, your knees and that. That was originally why I did it. And also when it's when it's cold and wet, oh, it's cold, so. Keeps you a bit warm as well. That was that was the main reason. It was more like this, the grazes and cuts, and then oh, okay, it's yeah. like one of those things where you do once you play well, you keep doing it. And I've always done it, and then people just start moaning about it all the time. So I just kept yeah, that. yeah, you get like a good handful of your leg one time, and you're like, oh, what? Yeah. He's like a slug. <laughs> it's got, it's when you... After the first few carries, it's kind of gone. So and then it's gone. Yeah. No, it's oh. fucking not. I remember tackling you, just coming off it covered in fucking Man. vats. You <laughs> and you and Pickamoles. He used to cover himself. Yeah, and I reckon that's to make him make him more slippery, more of a slippery eel than you already. Slippery, are. slippery snake. But no, yeah. um, do, do, you know when Sink puts the handball wax on. Yeah. Eight. It just it, it destroys the ball. He touches one, touches oh. the ball once. That's it. The ball's covered, mate. It's like a it's like a beehive. It's mad. Yeah. He puts so much on for games. It's crazy. Not the spray, it, like the proper. Oh, I hate yeah. it. I ha- and, yeah. and there's nothing worse when someone gives you a high five and you yeah. and you're like you bastard. Like I don't <laughs> want that on my hands. Uh, so that's why I always go around. If people give me high fives, I'm just do that now because I don't want it anywhere near me. But Brownie, when you're blowing out your hoop like bending over and touching your knees, do you not get it all over your hands? No, I I'm not like you. I don't do that. Yeah, he, <laughs> you're he's one of these. always in control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know how people do that when they no, body language. <laughs> body language. There's that study, though. There's that study. That's the optimal yeah. um, way to recover, isn't it? On your hands. Oh. So but yeah, bending people, over, hands on knees. Yeah. All those people, all those S and C coaches and head coaches used to shout body language. Oh, you know, yeah. don't show any weakness. Well, actually, they're wrong because we yeah. want to recover quicker. Surely, we want to recover quick. Exactly. Are you? Are you a hands on head, Max? Are you one of these? Oh, mate, I'm whatever it takes. I don't know where they're going. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Into a position <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Kit Kat. Physio kick back. <laughs> yeah. Get over there with the Lucasade. I've got a spasm in the old hamstring. <laughs> Just chill. Yeah. Oh, this is the other one. Hands in the shirt. That's a... Yeah. I'm going to die. Yeah, like the, Bane, gonna die. the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight from Bane. Ah, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's a good All one. Right. I do like that one. Sorry. Oh, boys, let's, let, let's, let's, let Mike, let's let Mike do his quick fire because I want to hear some of these answers, please. Oh, uh, right, let's start. Mike, first thing that comes into your head, best player you've ever played with? Uh, Danny Kerr. Best player you've ever played against? Um, Dan Carter. Biggest fight you've witnessed in training? Biggest fight? Um... What about, didn't Boise knock out Orwell? 
Yeah, it was in a forward session though, so we didn't see oh, it. Oh, you weren't. There. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, and then he got sent in. Even, well. got sent in like a naughty schoolboy. Yeah, because <laughs> um, Hallwell was um, the teacher's pet. It was like John Kingston's favourite bloke of all time. Like oh, he right. loved him. So then Boise came in as a young pup, <laughs> winging in a mall session, sent him in, sent him home. I think it was ridiculous, but yeah, that we we didn't see that because we were too busy kicking and backstone fight. Marlon Yard and Dozza. <laughs> Yes, that that's probably the best fight I've seen. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Marlon yeah. and, and yeah, Paul Jones were in the physio room, both on the physio bed, I think, and they were kind of going at each other about some stuff. And then was it was it Doran Jones said something about Marlon Yard's girlfriend? Then Marlon Yard jumped off, and Doz has got his head in the physio bed, you know, in the, the <laughs> hole in the bed, and he just comes up, uppercuts him through the hole in the thing, and then they just start going off. There's like there's like medical equipment flying everywhere, people trying to jump in and break them up. Like it was madness. There was the poor um masseuse ladies like stuck in the middle of it as well. Um yeah. then Doran Jones um tore his calf. He'd just come back from a calf injury, tore his calf. I think that was the end of him. I think he was like done at Quinn's. Like, yeah, I think he was um had to stop playing, yeah. Yeah, now. Oh, wait, hang on. Actually, biggest fight, Mike, you've witnessed on the World Cup pre-season camp. Yeah, it wasn't really a fight. That was um, me getting punched, and that was it. <laughs> um, that was not much of a fight. And uh, yeah, I ended up with a black eye. Um, Who was it? Ben Tio. Oh, oh yeah, he's, he's, that would probably hurt. He's a pretty yeah, powerful, he's, powerful chap. He never, he never, he, he never trained. He would always be on the side doing boxing as well, so he was pretty handy. He had his own boxing gloves and all sorts. Yeah, it wasn't great. What yeah. was Eddie Jones like about the whole thing? Oh, he was great, as you can imagine. Top bloke. So, um, <laughs> no, he he called me to um, say I wasn't in the uh, World Cup squad, which wasn't nice anyway. And then it, it felt like he kind of used that as the reason why. And then when I kind of went back and challenged him on it, he did his usual flipping, um, just flips into into that side of, of Eddie Jones that we've all heard about with his sharp tongue and, and things like that. Um, because I basically said, well, this is not what happened. This is what I think happened. And he said, you know, no, I've got, I think, witness reports. And I said, well, I want to see those reports. And then that's when he kind of flipped, um, yeah, with his sharp tongue. So that was disappointing to end, end things like that. Um, but yeah, this what it is. All right, he doesn't he doesn't get much love this this uh, on on here until we get him on and then we'll be like, oh, we love you. He's got no uh, coaches left with Australia. He's only been there five minutes. They're all jump ship, <laughs> so kind of says it all. But he's he's doing Bob Aaron's this year, I think. Yeah, shame. Is that why you're not saying anything now? No, right. fuck it. I just know that's me. Fucked. I've definitely, definitely never played. <laughs> uh, right, final couple. Biggest enemy in rugby, but by that we mean person who just rubbed you up the wrong way throughout oh. your career. Ryan Wilson. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Why? <laughs> When's on the field? Like, there's, there's loads of people. I'm one of them, you know, one of them dickheads that give it chat and can be annoying and things like that. Ryan's one of them for sure. Um, there's loads of them, and then afterwards, you're just like, it's just part of the game, isn't it? You just get on with it. Some some games you win, and and you're happy with that, and there's you know other times it kind of bites you in the ass, and and you've lost. So yeah, there's no one really. There's no one. And final one, Greek yeah. Mike. Uh, three people in a cab with you for the ultimate party. Uh, my old Queens teammate Jordan Turner Hall. Um, John Ryan, I think second name. For, he was in the Barbarians, just gone to Chiefs. He was at Munster. Is that a second name, John Ryan? Yeah, John Ryan, yeah. yeah. Fucking absolute legend. He would be another one. And third, I'll go with uh, Nick Easter. He, he's good value. Isn't he? Yeah, he's good value. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much uh, for your time, mate. See you there, guys. Cheers, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, well, we've got the man of the moment, England's most exciting player in our friend of the show, Ollie Lawrence. Ollie, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you guys doing? You're up. 
He's back again. He's back again. Sorry about Max. Max, what the fuck are you doing? Where are you looking now? Hey, Ollie, it's an absolute pleasure as always. <laughs> Very happy to see you in that England starting lineup. You deserve it, big rig, doing mad things to good people for the blue, black, and white above. But we got the dub over the weekend, old boy. Oh, stop <laughs> boasting, yeah, man. Stop boasting. No, I needed He's to. on a high. He's on a high. It's a West Country derby. I'm high. And also, we got lucky. I'm not going to lie to you. We got a bit lucky. <laughs> Where are you, Ollie? You got um, you got a bit of time off now, a bit of downtime. Yeah, I just went back to Worcester this afternoon to like clear out the house because um, I'm renting out this week, so I had to get get it ready for the new tenants, and then just came back to Bath now, and then back to we're in Brighton this week for camp, so heading back there tomorrow midday. Yeah, so what does that look like then? A, a down week, sort of, because there's no game obviously this weekend. Uh, uh, we basically have like an off feet off feet conditioning block and gym tomorrow. And like walk through and stuff, and then Wednesday, Thursday we have two hard training days, um, and that's it really for the week. Oh, piece of piss! <laughs> so yeah, that, that, any that's, social that's events? Uh, no, I don't think there's any plan this week. Um, I don't know. Maybe a couple of us might stay in Brighton because Marcus seems to be the the talk of the town down there, so he can show us the ropes. Uh, but yeah, I might stay down there on the evening just get some food, and, uh, and that's about it really. Before I forget, I've got to ask you. I've seen the photo. You had a big old smile on your face. <laughs> With something that the Princess of Wales was saying, what 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 was going on? Nah, I think at that time she was just she was telling us about um, how like she was coming into the change room, like William was obviously in the other one, um, and how he wasn't coming into ours because obviously he he was important, <laughs> obviously there for the Welsh, um, and how she was pretty buzzing the fact that we'd won today, so she had the bragging rights. <laughs> Is that right? So he wouldn't yeah. come in, and she went. Nah, she, he went into the change room. She came into ours, but I think we were. We were happier with her coming into ours, to be honest. Ollie, last time we spoke, you were trialling at Bath. Now you, you're off the back of winning try in Cardiff, man of the match performance in round two. How crazy have the last couple of months been for you? Yeah, it's been mental, really. I was actually just talking to one of my mates on the phone on the way back down to Bath to just how kind of a whirlwind six months it's been, really, for me. Um, obviously, everything that happened at Worcester and then moving to Bath and then signing for Bath and then not being in the England squad to start with for the Six Nations and then kind of getting thrown into it and then getting stuck in. And obviously off the back of that, um, we've had two pretty good performances as a team, managed to get two wins and then hopefully we can uh, kick on and perform against France and then leave the decider hopefully for, for in Ireland. Um, but no, I think it's been it's been crazy. I've kind of just tried to take it all in and just keep focusing on the main thing, which is the rugby, obviously. Um, and that's, yeah, it's been good so far. I'm enjoying myself this year. And um, I think that was the main thing for me. Um, I lost a lot of enjoyment last year, obviously being injured um, for most of the year. I think the main thing for me was just trying to uh, find some enjoyment again in the game. And I, I found that a bit this year. And I think my performances off the back of it have, have been down to that. Um, just just enjoying it, playing my mates and just getting stuck in. And yeah, that's basically it, really. It's crazy, isn't it? Because we've, we've just had Brownie on. He was talking about how many guys were in that Barbarian squad that he played with, guys from Worcester as well. Yeah. That were in the same boat as you. Like, didn't know, and that was almost a trial run. And, and to see all those guys go on, it's, fuck it, it's so good to see, eh? Yeah, no, it, it's amazing. Like, to think some boys, like, even like Owen, for example, Owen Williams, like, had a, like, a terrible run of injuries at Worcester. And then to see him back starting for Wales on the weekend, like, I spoke to him before and after the game and, we just said like it's been crazy times really like to see him back there it's really like pretty special to to have to be playing against these boys again um and to see them doing so well for their clubs uh, although everything that happened at Worcester obviously things everything happened for a reason and to see that what's happened with uh, with certain players and how they've managed to kick on to makes makes us all really proud i'm i'm a proper believer in that everything happens yeah. for a reason and like genuinely do you reckon you sit there and go like if all that stuff didn't happen with Worcester and like th this all hadn't happened and you hadn't moved to Bath and you weren't playing like you were at Bath, there's a good chance you wouldn't have been in the England team. Like that that could have been a possibility. Yeah, definitely. Hundred percent. I think the whole the whole move for me was just was uh was probably the thing that I needed that I never knew. Um I kind of was thrown into a different environment. Um obviously all my mates were, who were Worcester couldn't play and I took it as the opportunity to make sure that um I took it with both hands and yeah, I think that kind of the element of like desperation of not having having a job and then managing to get one uh, definitely played a, a factor in um, the performances I've had this year. I bloody love that. I love that. So, right, right. By that rationale, you believe in fate? Yeah. yeah. Oh, delicious. I'm, I'm all for it, lads. Idealism. <laughs> 
a preordained <laughs> destiny for us all. Okay. No, my 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 missus went and saw one of these like uh, mediums. A, a mystic, a medium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I was well, like, what did they say? Oh, uh, your husband. I'm like, oh fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> move on, move on. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> nah, oi, it was scary how accurate this person was. It was scary. Yeah. We'll, 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 di- we don't want to hear my crap. We want to hear about this. this, and this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's not digress too far. Yeah, no, <laughs> <I'm digressing. laughs> Ollie, we've, we've waxed lyrical about your abilities on the pods. Uh, obviously, we're not saying we're the reason you got your England call up again, but um, we have talked a lot about what a wonderful hybrid center you are, kind of perfect mix of power. Uh, pace and skill can can you tell us that the players or the player you've based your game on you know who are the real heroes that you wanted to emulate on the pitch uh I think I've always said it's been kind of a mixture of Manu and Sonny Bill those are kind of all the players that when I was growing up I kind of always wanted to be like a combination of both of them um and yeah that's uh I'm probably not nowhere near <laughs> nowhere near their level but um yeah that's definitely some people that I looked up to growing up um and definitely a part of them was uh, was installed within me, like growing up in terms of the the aspects of their game. But I guess the main thing now is I'm just trying to create create a name for myself, really, and trying to put my own footprint on on the game. Um, and that's been my main focus, really, over the last six months uh, to last year, is trying to get back to how I was before. And and I think with that level of enjoyment, um, when I'm playing rugby, I kind of bring the best out of myself, and that's kind kind of where I show my true nature. Um, that's something that I'm just trying to focus on moving forward. Anything you've changed or done this season to, that would, would merit the success? Or is it just like sticking to the grindstone? I don't think there's anything in particular. I think my just like understanding of the game's just probably got a bit better. Uh, probably yeah. as I've matured. And I think going to Bath and surrounding myself with different types of people and different coaches probably definitely helped as well. Um, and yeah, I think just in general, just maturing as I've got a bit older, uh, understanding how the game works and... Maybe coming down a few kegs as well probably helped me as well in my running. Um, it's, no, it's no fun running around too heavy. So, uh, yeah, that's probably been an aspect as well. Did jo- John Joe, John Joe help you, did he? John, Jonathan yeah, Joe's he's been, yeah, he's been he's Mate, been the guru, he's been I'm telling you, he, he might a sap a bit, but my God, the man's polit- like intellectual property on playing centre is mad. Like when you're yeah. listening to coaches and then you got JJ next to you being like, nah, nah, that's terrible. And then you hear his <laughs> and you're like... Yeah, that makes way more sense. Like he's so on point. Uh, yeah, I he's been really club. good. Yeah, yeah, he's been really good for me at the club this year. Just kind of, he's just made me feel welcome um, and has helped me whenever it's whenever he can. Uh, and like I appreciate that a lot, obviously, because obviously we're both fighting to play in the in the same position, and obviously we played alongside each other as well. But he's been nothing but supportive towards me. Um, and yeah, hopefully long may that continue. Who's been your roommate in the England camp? It's been a mix, really. First week I had uh, Slady. Because uh, obviously I came in last minute, so I think I swapped with Elliot, who I got injured. Um, and then the next week I was with Anne, and then I've been with Alex Mitchell the last two weeks. Oh, okay. Best out of those three? Yeah. Who's, who's uh, the best? Probably Ant. Me and Ant probably get on. He's probably my yeah. closest friend in camp, so it's probably going to be a bit, You're a bit of a hype beast as well, isn't it? <laughs> my, guy, my guy's got yeah, the slightly. represent hat on. I'm sensing it. <laughs> the yeah, Canada no, Goose in the background. Beautiful. Yeah, no, yeah. I tried to hide that by like putting the camera. <laughs> <in people. laughs> he's a he's a big gamer as well, isn't he? He loves his game. Yeah, he? Totally, he loves yeah. it. About times to go back to the room, and I'd just be watching yeah. a bit of like Netflix on my laptop, and he's just sitting in the corner, just gaming and just chatting. And half the time, he's just sat on his phone because he's dead. Um, so uh, yeah, no, but he loves his game. Then <laughs> you're forming a lovely little partnership with Henry Slade in the centres. How easy has that come together, and why do you think it's working so well? I kind of think we just understand each other quite well like he's been since I came in the first time around a couple of years back he was just like we got on quite well and I think the same again this time like our friendship off the field kind of has helped us on the field I think we just kind of get each other and we can have those conversations like he's really helpful in terms of like the understanding of the game like he's really smart um, and he he he, uh, he understands the game a lot and we just have those small conversations which has helped us and obviously we have different styles but I think they're kind of they supplement each other quite well. I think that's so important as well. And I'm sure when the coaches are watching, they'll be going, right, how are these two working together, even off the field? Like you've seen it with uh, Sione Tuipilotu and Hugh Jones yeah. this season in the centres. And those boys like complement each other like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, um, definitely. So, and I know how hard they work together, especially when they're, they're with Finn. So on yeah. that, 
you, I, bet, I bet you do a lot of analysis with him, sit down and go through his stuff. But do you involve Faz in that as well? Like when you get into it? Because he's obviously a distributor. Yeah, definitely. I think he's Faz is like a one of the main people in camp that obviously when we're talking as like a, a back unit and even within the team that he kind of hit like his understanding of the game's like uh, another level really. And I think he's always driving us to be to the best we can be in training and, and pushing us to attack teams, not just kind of go through the motions. And I think that's installed within all the with within all the group. Um so yeah, he's a massive factor within us, like pushing our relationship and making sure that we get the best out of each other within within training and then obviously into the game. And then over your shoulder, you got Marcus Smith. Like, nah, I wouldn't do it like that. I would. I would. <laughs> 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 nah, so Marcus is Marcus is the same as well. He's always pushing to to get us better as well. Um, I think all the tens and the the nines, they're called the generals within within the squad. Um, they 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 handle the game and the the, the management of it, and they they do it to a superior level. So um, yeah, listen to what they have to say, and then get in the position to call for the ball, basically. Eddie Jones seemed to have a problem. We didn't couldn't understand. It seemed illogical at the time for us, but he seemed to have a problem with picking you. Bizarrely slated you a bit in his book. Must have been very refreshing when you saw Steve get the job. Um, wh- why do you think Eddie refused to give you a proper run? I don't know. I think sometimes you, I don't know, you have relations. There's, there's people that love Eddie and there's people that have the opposite opinion. And I don't think he's a, a bad bloke at all. I think um, I must have... Gave an impression of myself when I first went into camp that probably didn't suit the way he wanted his his players to be, and that's something that I couldn't I couldn't change because I wasn't in in the squad uh, long enough for him to see a different side to me. I think towards the end of the summer of twenty one, I think um, he saw a change in in me, and I think what he obviously was seeing before that he didn't like um, clearly wasn't there anymore. Um, and obviously then I got injured and wasn't really in the mix. And I think uh, yeah, to see. To have Steve in camp, he's um he's been a breath of fresh air, I think, for the whole team. Um, he's very honest and kind of gives you his opinion, um, and will push you to be to be to work harder and to to fight for the team. And I think that's the main thing. I think there's a lot of respect I have for for both Eddie and for Steve. Um, but I think um for me so far, I think my relationship with Steve's been really good. Um, and he's got the best out of me, and uh, hopefully there's there's more to come with that. So you're saying if you end up facing Australia in the World Cup somehow, you'd enjoy being selected against Australia and shoving one up him? <laughs> yeah, I think, to be honest with you, if we face them where potentially we could face them, I'll just be happy with the win. Uh, but yeah, no, it'll be a, a silver lining um, in the background uh, to have got one over. But um, yeah, the main thing for this team, I don't think we have any like personal agendas with any with any players or teams. I think we just want to win as a team, um, no matter who's who's the coach or the players against us. Um, but yeah, no, everyone I'm sure will have their own individual reasons for wanting to win that game, especially. Beat Eddie that little bit as well. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> classy, classy, classy. Class, class, class. Yeah. Um, but Ollie, what highlight to us the main difference between the two uh, sort of training camp experiences and, and the camp experiences that you've had uh, under... Eddie and under Steve? I think there's a lot. I think there is a lot of differences between the two coaches and different styles. But I think the main thing for me is the environment. Um, I Personally, for me, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the people. Um, but for me personally, I felt like I could be myself more within within this England setup and within this team. Um, I wouldn't say I felt restricted, but I'd say I was probably more on edge when Eddie was there. And I, I don't know why that is. Maybe just the way he is as, as a coach and how he, how he decides to coach and how he likes his environment to be is different to Steve. But uh, I've got nothing but huge respect for Steve and the way he's managed to come in and get this team so tight already. Um, and I've managed to to feel like I can free myself up and play play to my best because I don't have the weight on my shoulders of feeling stressed at all. I'm just constantly just focusing on getting better and, and training hard, um, which inevitably will hopefully get you in selection. And then I guess the what, what happens on the weekend happens on the weekend. That's just a, an 80-minute performance. But yeah, in terms of the training and stuff, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable in camp and I'm really enjoying it and uh, being around this squad and, and building as a team. Saying that then, so like saying the boys feel more comfortable in themselves, because I'm sure that is the case. I think people will be able to come out their shells a bit more. Who's Who's got the best crack in camp at the moment then since you've been in? Uh, who, who are the jokers? Who are the boys taking the piss? Some of the young lads like... Jack Van Portfleet and them, they're always chirping up. And Jack Walker's a good one as well. He's uh, he's always got a bit of crack about him. Same, same with Ant as well. Ant's, Ant's probably up there. And Lenny, when Lenny's in camp, he's always cracking jokes. Um, 
I think in general, mate, to be honest with you, I think the whole squad, it's just been a completely different environment. Um, and everyone's everyone's really, really enjoying it, I think, this time around. And I, I don't know what it was like in the summer or the last Six Nations, but um, so far, it's been it's been really good to be back in camp. Yeah, those poor Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't uh, envy to, to be fair, you're not the first person who's been involved in in Eddie's camps who's who's come on and say and said those exact things about being on edge and you know maybe it's that's the way that he operates and it seems to have worked. Yeah. But speaking of coaches um, as well, you you've worked with some incredible ones in your career. Can you tell us what it's like working with Kevin Sinfield and how he's managed to get the best out of you? Uh, yeah, Kev's. Uh is also like a, a incredible bloke left and we would forget like the rugby side of things just off the field as a as a person and what he's done um over the, the last few years and his rugby career i think that just sums him up as a bloke like he's an incredible person um and he's like uh you know you come across those coaches sometimes and you, you want to play for them as well um and i think with kevin um I don't know why I just called him Kevin. Actually, I've never called him Kevin in my life. Um, especially with Kev, like he's just he's just a great bloke, um, and he he's the first to like admit a mistake or if he he's unsure about something, like he'll have your input on it. Um, and like that player coach relationship, I think is is vital, and I think he's got like the best part of it, and he's he's really pushed us with our defence and. We're only getting better and better as, as each week goes on and we're nowhere near the finished product, but he's, he's he's pushing us each day and each week for us to get united as a team and um, each weekend hopefully showing that white wall in defence and that's the, what we're striving for so far. Quick one on how excited you are about having uh, Rise old buddy uh, Finn Russell playing inside you next season. Yeah, no, nah, pretty exciting to be honest. I've, uh, I've had a couple of chats with him over the, over the, the last six months and um, yeah I'm excited I mean he's playing he's probably some of his best rugby at the moment um, and I think you'd be stupid to say you wouldn't be excited to have him in your team and I can't wait to see how our attack will flourish with him with him being at 10 so uh, yeah very excited I think it's uh, an excited signing for the club um, but more importantly yeah, I can't wait to be on the back end of some uh, some wide passes from him some of the boys won't be standing up they're saying where's all the other fucking money going <laughs> <laughs> he's, taking it all. he's taking the whole budget <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we gonna eat? <laughs> uh, exactly. <clears throat> now it'll be good. I think. Uh, I think everyone's excited for him to come. I think it's such a big name and uh, uh, once in a once in a generation generational talent. So um, yeah, I can't wait to have him. Now. He'll be kicking about in his Louis Vuitton jacket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I can't wait to see what car he pulls up in or where he's going to live. Probably going to hire the whole of Bath out, rent rent probably three houses <laughs> and put them all together. <laughs> No, he's a good boy. I love him. He's a good lad. <laughs> awesome uh, performance and victory for you on Saturday, Ollie. Talk us through uh, the celebrations on Saturday night. Uh, they were pretty low key, to be honest with you. And that, that's no no word of a lie. We just kind of went back to the hotel. Um, uh, some of our partners were there and just had a few drinks within the hotel. It was nothing nothing crazy. Um, I'm sure we'll save that till the, after the last game um, against Ireland. But no, it was good. I think it was a really important win for us. I think it's the first time we'd won there since 2017 um, and the biggest points difference we'd had since 2003. So uh, it was a huge step forward for us. It's always tough playing in Cardiff. Um, I don't think it's ever been an easy battle and fair play to them because obviously everything that's going on in, uh, in Wales at the moment. Um, yeah, but I think it was as important for us to get the win and Hopefully we can take that momentum through to to Twickenham um, in two weeks' time against France. You boys jump through to their change room, go and catch up with a few of them. Yeah, I caught up with uh, obviously Josh Adams and Owen Williams. I know quite well, so I went and caught up with them. Um, and a few of the lads went and go went and saw their mates with Macca, went and saw Toby, Fellatau, and a few of the other boys. But yeah, no, it was good to good to go and mingle with those boys. Um, and said it's been a while since I've seen them. And were they saying it had been a tough old week with everything going on? Yeah, I think it was just there was so much uncertainty as to what was going on. Obviously, they were fighting for obviously the the whole pay situation. Um, so I think it was it's been tough for them. Obviously, I can kind of relate similar to when I was with Worcester and the whole the whole negotiations there as to what was going on. Um, so yeah, it was it was tough um, from the sounds of things. But they they I mean they played they still played very well. Um, and after everything that went on, I think um, I've got huge respect for them. That very moment. You dot the ball down, made it look very simple, like classic, tra- you know, training dot down in the corner. Take us through exactly how you felt, knowing that you basically sealed the win. Yeah, no, it was pretty special. To, it's always special to score. I mean, everyone loves scoring tries. 
Um, but obviously on the international stage in front of all those all those fans um, was was amazing, um, and it kind of just ticked off the perfect day. Really, obviously we got we got the win and managed to get on the score sheet, and I think we took a massive a massive step forward in in a, in the way we played. Um, so yeah, yeah no, it was it was enjoyable. Um, I was just kind of relief really. Obviously we kind of let them get back into it in that second half, um, especially with that try that they scored early on, um, and it was good to just kind of. That was kind of the the final the final straw uh, that kind of sealed the win for us. But yeah, that's it. See, you're fifteen ten seventy five minutes five minutes to go fifteen ten up, and like, yeah. that's exactly what I was going to ask you. It looked almost like when you scored that, you're like fucking. It looked like relief. Like was there a little yeah. bit of relief and excitement because the pressure yeah, was definitely. on, eh? Yeah, no. Wales kind of turned up the heat a bit towards that that back that back twenty, but we we stuck in it and we uh we managed to get our half and and kind of stay out. Um, and I think we just built those phases building into into that last 10 minutes uh, and we managed to yeah squeeze over in the corner Slady was just fell short um, I said to him if he reached for it or had a bit a bit more strength he probably would have gone over himself uh, but yeah no I had the easy walk in uh, thanks to some good hands from uh, from Mitch and Freddie um, so yeah no, that, that was uh, that was pretty special yeah it was pretty special always nice to win away eh? and uh, first time for me at Principality so yeah it was good Ollie let's just finish on Worcester and your opportunity opportunity to dig out the knobheads because last time you said you were going to come <laughs> back and vent your frustrations for what actually happened and went wrong now you're signed up with bar tell us just how shocking things actually got and 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 who's to blame sort of your take on everything Can you believe mark uh, actually works on like the bbc news and it that, like puts questions like yeah, that so like, nicely yeah. those knobheads those, <laughs> <knob-heads. laughs> those bloody knobheads <laughs> No, I think yeah, everyone kind of really knows my thoughts on um on the owners, and uh, I think to be honest with you, they've they've been very kindly treated uh, in the way that they've been given their punishments. I think they had a small fine and a little slap on the wrist, and they couldn't do do art for a bit, but they kind of left uh, a club in such uncertain times that now we are uh, we've been bought by owners who didn't really have any interest in competing at the the top flight, which I think is another another kick to the stomach, really, uh, and it's a shame because. There's so much history within the club, regardless of whether they've been incredibly successful, which unfortunately we haven't been. But there's so much history there and there's so there's such a large fan base, uh, which goes back so many years and there's so many memories that people have there with their kids and players especially. And to to see that go now and then to kind of seems like that it's been bought for, for other reasons. And uh, mm. that was kind of what we wanted to stop with the whole sale of it in the first place. And um yeah, it, it, it's it's not great. Um, obviously, we luckily managed to get them to stop changing the name. I think they decided to keep it as six rays, uh, as Worcester Warriors. Sorry, instead of six rays rugby, um, which is uh, which is good. But uh, yeah, I think no one really wants to see the club unless it's it's in the top flight. Um, so hopefully they can they can solve that issue and boys can uh, can see the club thrive again. And whether that's in the championship or whether they merge with Starbridge and go to that two, but potentially that three, because the average at bottom. Um, I think everyone just wants to see rugby back at six ways again. Uh, I think that's the main thing. Um, but yeah, no, the way things ended were is always going to be a sour taste. Uh, and I don't think I'll be ever speaking to the owners again. I don't think they'd want to speak to me either because I haven't got too much, too many nice words to say about them. Sounds like to me they're just trying to not pay anyone, basically. Yeah, basically, it's an easy way for them to, yeah, to pay it's the easy, isn't it? They're just being naughty. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, and I think yeah. the main thing was that, like whoever bought the club, the best interest was to look after the rugby creditors and make sure they were, even if they weren't paid all the money. I think just paying back some of it would have yeah. would have gone a long way. Like there's people with families and newborn babies on the way, or newborn babies that have arrived, and so many staff that have gone unemployed. Um, so I think that had been, it would have been nice, and I think it's the it would have been the right thing to do. Uh, we talk about right or wrong a lot in life, and I think that would have been the right thing to do. Uh, but they've made their own decisions and whatever they want to do with the club they're going to do from now on. But um, yeah, I hope they just have the the rugby as their, as their main priority and nothing else. Absolutely. Well, sadly, that is all the time we've got left for this week. A huge thank you to Ollie. Best of luck for the rest of the Six Nations and the rest of your season as a whole. We have been loving your performances and look forward to plenty more of those as well. And a huge thanks as well to Ryan and to Max and to all of you for listening. And we'll see you all next week.